My name is Wendy, and this is my son Tyler. He's nine months old. The high school students you'll see in this video are pregnant or are parents in the Afton Area School District. We are willing to share our teen pregnancy experience with you in hopes that you will slow down and think about the lasting consequences of having a baby too young and make decisions, decisions that you can live with. My name is Barb Wolf. I work with the Appleton Area School District as their school age parent coordinator. This is the third year of our program here in the school district and primarily what the program aims to do is assist teenagers who find themselves pregnant or our teen parents. We work with teen mothers and fathers working with them in the school system to help them finish off their education, earn a diploma, to assist them if they need some support services with daycare or transportation needs and to offer support groups to help them cope with their responsibilities of being a student, a parent, and um, hopefully preparing them for the world of, world of work. Today I have some of the students from Appleton West High School with me and we'll start off with some introductions. Hi, my name is Johanna and I have a little boy named Johnny. My name is Lisa, and I have a little boy named Alec. My name is Lynn, I have a little boy named Joey. I'd like to start off some of our discussion today about the issue of teen pregnancy by asking you how your parents reacted when they found out you were pregnant. How did you tell them? Lynn, would you like to go first on that? Um, well, my mom knew I was going to the doctor because I was feeling sick a lot. And she knew that they were taking a pregnancy test. And I just told her that it was positive. And she was kind of shocked. She wouldn't talk to me for a couple days. But once she got over it, she was real supportive. OK. Do you remember, Johanna? Yeah, my mom was really supportive because she went to the doctors with me. My dad didn't talk to me for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, he just didn't know what to say. He didn't believe it at first. Is that kind of a typical reaction for fathers? Sort mm -hmm. of speechless or... Because mm -hmm. I was a little girl, so he didn't really say much at all. I've heard that from other girls. Yeah. Talissa, do you recall? No, well, my mom was kind of, I don't know, upset and shocked at first, but... After she got over it, she was kind of supportive about it. Tell me how friends or your boyfriend reacted. Anybody want to go first on that one? My friends were really supportive, and once I had them, they're like, let's go out all the time, you know, and I can't, you know. And they're like, go to the babysitter. You can't just leave a baby babysitter all the time, you know. You can't go out every time. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're kind of like, you get mad at you, but they have to understand, you know, you have a big responsibility now. Mm -hmm. I got closer to some of my friends, and uh, they're really supportive, and I, know, I guess I kind of helped them in a way. My friends were really supportive, too. A couple of them have babies of their own, so they were really supportive. Mm -hmm. Want to go first? Um, I didn't even think about abortion, um, and I was kind of thinking about adoption, but the more I thought about it, for me, carrying around my baby for nine months and then giving it up to somebody else was kind of weird, so mm -hmm. the best decision for me was to keep it. It really is an individual decision, so what's right for one person may not be right for another. Johanna, how about you? Do you recall how you came to this decision? I don't know. It's like my mom said, there's no way, you know? She can, like, she wanted to make the decision for me, but... So your mother had a big influence on yeah. your decision? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's about it. I never really thought about abortion or adoption. I just thought it was the best thing to do to keep it and raise it myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, going through a pregnancy, nine months can seem like a long time. And there are side effects of pregnancy, too, which I think a lot of teenagers aren't always prepared for. And once they find themselves pregnant, then they realize that they're going to 
have to continue to feel like this till the delivery of the baby. Well, delivery, that's a whole nother topic in itself, and we can talk about that in a few moments. But um, let's just talk about how you felt during your pregnancy, and maybe you could tell teenagers out there what to expect with um, pregnancy. It's not just having a little basketball under your shirt and feeling, you know, there's nothing going on except for just having this extra little, um, you know, person in, in the front there. Um, anybody want to start? What about you, Lynn? Did you have any side effects of pregnancy? I was sick all the time. I Like in what way? Just real nauseated, um, especially at night. I'd come home from school and I'd be really tired. I was sleeping all the time. I was sick. And Did you know that was part of pregnancy for some women? Yeah. So you tried to prepare for it, or? <laughs> yeah, a little, I guess. Okay. So did the nine months go slowly because of the way you felt? At first it went slow, but as I got up to like six months, it went pretty fast because that's when I started feeling a little better. Mm -hmm. How about your energy level? That was terrible. Mm -hmm. I was tired all the time. I didn't want to do anything. Were you able to keep up with school at this time? It was hard. It was hard getting up in the morning, but I still made it to school. Mm -hmm. Did your grades stay about the same? My grades slipped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how the delivery went, length of time, and yours was rather recent yeah, when um, we asked you. I mean, did you feel, I was in bed sleeping, and then I just woke up and I started having contractions. Uh -huh. So, and they were, they were three minutes apart already. It's like I was sound asleep. It just hits you out of nowhere, and then, and then it, it hurts <laughs> a lot. But, you know, after a while, you know, you have to control your breathing. I got sick really bad at the hospital when I had them. Mm -hmm. I was in labor for eight hours. But then, after, you know, after they broke my water, it was a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It took only 15 minutes, then it was easy then. Having um, contractions three minutes apart, that was pretty much jumping right into labor. I know, it just labor, like, most. I sound asleep and he's like, uh -huh. you have to really control your breathing. Did you rush to the hospital right away? I called my doctor and my doctor told me to come in right away. Right, right. So overall, the delivery for you, um, did you feel you were in control? Or did you yeah. expect it they was going me, to be like that? Uh, they told me to stop pushing and I didn't and he came. Uh -huh. Flying out. <laughs> so I had Didn't really follow directions too well. Right. You can't. Uh -huh. Who went in with you? Did you have my a Lamaze coach? My mom did and, and father did. Then right. after I got sick, he left. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Um, perhaps um, another question we can address uh -huh. is um, once you have the baby, you might think that you know the biggest cost is going to be the hospital bill, and I don't know if um, any of you recall the hospital bill, that is usually a large initial cost, but then eventually there's a uh, cost of diapers, possibly food, clothes for the baby, and then unless your mother is able to babysit at no fee, there's some daycare costs involved so you can return to school. Let's talk about what it costs to have a baby, to have a child, and how you support the baby. If you want to start with the delivery cost, as you recall, you can start there. Otherwise, you can just uh, pick it up from coming home with the baby from the hospital. Any of you um, have an idea on some figures? How about you, Talisa? Um, the delivery, um, all the bills together, they were really huge because he was sick when he was born, but um, the insurance covered the whole thing, luckily. Um, when I go to school and to work, I get a daycare that I bring him to and I pick him up from, and you pay for it, so. Mm -hmm. Through our project. Mm -hmm. okay. Does your family find that helpful? Yeah. Where do you think that your family would have found the money? Because legally you have to be in school now through age 18. Do you think there would have been some way that you could have afforded to pay? Daycare and I'd transportation. probably end up paying it through my checks, but I only get paid every two weeks, and they're not that big. Mm -hmm. 
Do you pay for diapers on your own? Yeah. Clothes for the baby? So is your budget fairly tight? Do you find Alec requires? No, my mom. My boyfriend and a lot of people buy him things too, so. So if people know. pitch in and help share the expenses, it's a little easier to I handle. don't really get a chance to spend my money on him because everybody else always does. Uh -huh. Well, considering you'll be raising him through age 18 mm -hmm. at least, I guess you'll have other chances to spend some money. Um, Lynn, do you have some idea on costs? Your baby's almost a year now. Have oh. you ever thought about how much you've spent this first year? With diapers, food, clothes? A lot. <laughs> um, Where's well, the money come from? My mom helps me out with buying diapers. Mm -hmm. And like formula we get from WIC. Okay. And clothes, we were pretty lucky because we got my cousin, her little boy, all his old clothes we got to use, so we didn't really have to buy him that much stuff. So, first year of life you've been able to manage pretty well, right? And eventually they want more toys and uh, things for outside and have some other interests too, so. Well, that's good. You've had a lot of family support, too. Your baby's still pretty much a uh, newborn. Have you noticed any costs, or yeah. <laughs> where are you finding the Diapers. funds? <laughs> Diapers. Those really add up, there don't you they? <laughs> yes, you through tons. Uh-huh. He's yeah. only a month and a half, and I went through a lot. They really do at first. And they're not cheap. No, they're, they're really expensive. Aren't. Okay. Well, now that everybody is in school, um, how do you find the balance in your life? I mean, people might be wondering, how do you do it? Um, sometimes being a student is a big job in itself, keeping up with grades, mm -hmm. or being a student and working part-time. Well, some of you work part-time, plus you're a student, plus you have a baby. How do you juggle your responsibilities? Should we start with you, Talisa? Um, Are there enough hours in the day? No, I get really tired by the time I'm at work. I go to school for four hours, and I get half an hour break, and then I go to work for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. How about your evenings? What are your evenings like then? You get home um, from work, and then what? Take a nap, and then usually later I'll go and do something. And sometimes my mom watches my son, and then at times I bring him with me. Mm -hmm. Do you have time in the evening for schoolwork and playing with Alec? I have, I always play with Alec, but I usually get my schoolwork done at school. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's helpful. All right. Uh, Lynn, do you have more of a full-time schedule than four hours at school? Yeah, I okay. get done at 10 after 2. Okay. What's your typical day? Why don't you take us from the morning? You get up at what time, and then what's a typical day like? Well, Joey usually wakes me up at... About six o'clock. So you don't need an alarm clock? No. <laughs> and I get up with him, feed him, change him, and then he'll usually play a while while I get ready for school. And then my mom watches him all day when I'm in school. And then I'll come home, help out around the house, play with Joey for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he usually goes to bed around 8.30. Okay. Do you have time in the evening for yourself? to go out or to get your schoolwork done? It's really hard because he's starting to walk now and he's into everything and you just gotta watch him constantly. So he needs a little more supervision and a little more attention. Yeah. Okay. Well yours, your baby's quite a newborn yet so... I gotta get up a lot. Uh huh. Is it sleeping through the night yet? No. <clears throat> what times do you get up to feed it during the night? Mm -hmm. He's usually up from like, he's up at from like 4 to 10, and I put him in bed around, I give him a bath, that makes him sleep better. And he mm -hmm. gets up, he goes to bed around 11, he gets up around 3.30, mm -hmm. and then he gets up just when I go to school. Mm -hmm. So he's not sleeping through the night yet. Okay. He gets to be up for school, mm -hmm. 6.30. So are you adjusting with yeah. less sleep now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At first it was really hard, because right. you would be like, always oh, tired. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, no. The views of this panel have tended to be more on the positive aspects of being a teen parent. 
However, at times, it's a lot harder than it looks. One must remember that being a parent is a 24-hour-a-day job. Yes, you get breaks when you're in school or when you go out, but the fact is this. Your child is always going to be there and will always need you to be there for him or her. Balancing the two roles of being a parent and student can be quite difficult at times. It's hard to get homework or anything done for that matter when you have a child. When they are real small, they cry a lot, and when they get older, they crawl around and start getting into everything. In January of last year, I found out that I was pregnant, and I was faced with a couple major decisions at a very young age. I had to decide what I was going to do about my pregnancy, and it was a really hard decision at the time. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, I was devastated. I had been planning on going to college after I got out of high school, and I had all kinds of hopes and dreams. And when I found out I was pregnant, I virtually had decided that none of my dreams would ever come true because I was going to have to have this baby. Um, I went to Planned Parenthood with a friend, and before they even had the results of the test, I, I knew I was pregnant, just some kind of internal thing. I just, I, I knew I was. And when they told me, I, I just, I cried. I cried for a long time. After a lot of consideration, I decided that I was going to have an abortion. At the time, it seemed like the right thing to do because I figured, well, when someone has a problem, no matter what it is, they try to solve it and get rid of the problem. And for me, my pregnancy was a problem, so I figured I'd get rid of it. Um, I went for the counseling that you are required to take before you have an abortion, and I got through that okay. I kept telling myself, well, it, it's not going to matter. You can get through this. You, you can have another baby someday. But um, I had an appointment made, and the day of the appointment, I woke up, and I, I couldn't go through with it. I, I called the clinic and said that I wasn't coming. And then I was faced with another big decision, um, whether, whether to give my baby up or keep him and raise him myself. Um, after my parents found out, my mom made me promise her that I would give the baby up. She didn't feel that I was mature enough or responsible enough to raise a child on my own. And so I did tell her I would you know, look into adoption agencies and find my baby a good home. About a third of the way through my pregnancy, I had decided that I was not giving my baby up. I had talked to several people, social workers, counselors, teachers at school, and they all, they all told me, like, from what I had said, that I'd probably be better off keeping my baby and raising him myself. Um, when my mom found out, she was very angry. She told me that there was no way in hell that I could bring my child into her home, and I better start looking for someplace else to live. This is Jamie. She was my birthing partner um, when I had Tyler. And um, I'd say she'd probably um, have to say it's a real interesting experience. Um, do you want to? Oh, well, at first, um, when we started going to the classes and we started to learn how to breathe, Wendy said that, oh, you're not going to be any help. You're not going to know what to do. You know, you're just, I'm going to be pregnant and I'm going to have all these contractions and you're just going to sit there. And finally the day came and um, I, I was pretty much a big help, I would imagine. <laughs> I don't think she knows it, but I was. Um, it's something that you'll never experience as a teenager unless unless somebody, one of your friends has a baby. It's really, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It was the chance of a lifetime. <laughs> Take a shot at it. <laughs> it was, I mean, tell, tell them both. It was scary because we get there and they, they send these two young girls into a little room 
and we have to sit and wait. They tell us to breathe. And, and I'm saying, okay, Wendy, let's start to breathe. And I was just like trying to go through the exercises and she just forgot how to breathe. And she was just breathing however she wanted to. And we're sitting in there and I mean, she's scared. She didn't know what to do. So, you know, she's walking around pacing in her little robe. And she, she was just like, let's leave, let's go to the other hospital. And I'm just like, Wendy, we can't. <laughs> well, I, after I had him, he, he was all purple and he was messy and wet and slimy. And he looked, he looked just terrible. And he sat there and he was screaming and crying. And I just, I looked at him and I thought, my God, <laughs> this is for real now. There's, there's no turning back. I have this, this child now. What do I do with him? And they, they let me hold him for a couple minutes. And he just, he sat there and he cried and cried. And in my mind, I was thinking, this is for the rest of my life. Am I, am I really sure about this? And um, I'll tell you, for the first couple months, I wasn't sure. I, I really had my doubts about the, the whole thing. I really had thought I made the wrong decision. I was out of school for the first month. I had him August 30th. School started on 31st, so obviously I didn't get to school. But um, I was out until the very beginning of October. And at night, Tyler would wake up like two or three times while I was trying to sleep. And I'd have to feed him. And then I'd get back to bed, and as soon as I fell asleep, it felt like he was, you know, he woke up again. It was a never-ending, you know, battle. And I'd come to school, I'd fall asleep in my classes. My grades just fell, I mean, tremendously. I had been an A-B student. I'm now a B-C student. Um, I don't know, I'd come to school, I'd fall asleep, I'd go to... Jamie's house and we'd sleep. watch TV and I'd sleep. I, everywhere I went, I'd be sleeping. And my social life, I, I didn't have one. I still really don't have one. You can't have a social life when you have a baby. You can go places and do things once in a while, but you can't run around like you used to. You don't have that freedom to do that. And at times I miss it, but at other times, I think I'm better off. I I don't party anymore, which I, I suppose it's better that I don't. I I miss it sometimes, but I know I'm better off this way. The first couple months with Tyler were a living hell. I have a little sister. I was four years old when my mom had her, and I really I don't remember much about her being a baby. Um, I had never really been exposed to children before, and not like a brand new baby. And it was it was really hard because he'd cry and cry, and I didn't know what he wanted. And he he was always wanting something though. I mean, he either wanted to be changed, fed, held, talked to. It was just it was it was really hard, and I didn't understand him. I think that's that's what made it so hard. I. For a while, I was thinking about giving him up for adoption because I didn't think I could do it. Um, I had mentioned it to my mom at one point, and she said that there was no way I could give him up now, not not after, you know. I went through all that, and I, I kept him. And so we went through the first couple months together, and it wasn't really, I didn't have any fun. I was scared, I was tired. I felt like I was all alone. A lot of it was because I was alone. I had a few friends that stood by me you know, throughout the pregnancy, but it it's really, your life changes a lot after you've had a baby. And you just, there's a lot of things you miss. Things really didn't start working out with Tyler until he was about two and a half months old. Um, at that point, he was starting to sleep through the night. And sometimes he wouldn't quite make it, but it, things were getting a lot easier. And um, he, 
one day I came home from school and I put him in his crib and he was watching his mobile go around and he was listening to the music and he was just laying there. And I had had a really bad day at school. Everything that could have possibly gone wrong had. And I just, I sat there watching him and he started to squeak and I picked him up. I was just holding him and I looked at him I picked him up and I held him up in front of me and I looked at him and I go, Tyler, I love you. And for the very first time, he looked me in the eyes and he smiled at me. And after that point, things started to go a lot better. Before that, I felt as if he didn't realize who I was and he didn't care about me. Which, I mean, face it, babies don't care about you. All they care about is themselves and that's that's how they are, that's how they have to be to survive. And, um, but after that happened, he, he and I got along a lot better. He started doing more things too. When babies are just tiny, they don't, they don't play. They, they don't coo, they don't do much of anything except sleep and cry. And my relationship with Tyler's father is not the greatest. Um, all I can really say is that um, we really didn't know each other. And it really bothers me a lot now because Tyler has this whole other family that I know nothing about. And someday he's gonna, he's gonna ask me, you know, about his dad. And I don't know what I'm gonna tell him. Financially, things are really tough. It's hard to budget $440 a month, which is what I get. I'm on AFDC. Um, most people call it welfare. Uh, I get $440 a month, and it, it doesn't go very far if you take into consideration that I have to pay a sitter for Tyler while I'm in school, um, and diapers. You would not believe how much diapers cost, and it seems like he goes through a bag of them so quickly. Um, baby food, that's not real expensive, but it adds up. Um, his formula and things like that. I'm on WIC, which is um, a program in Outagamie County for low-income families. It, to promote better nutrition for children. But I get my formula and juices and cereal through that. Another thing that costs a lot of money is doctor bills. My father's insurance fortunately paid for the, the delivery and hospitalization after I had Tyler. Um, that in itself costs quite a bit of money. Just for Tyler alone, um, it costs about pretty close to $400. And for me, it was it was over $700. It's not cheap to have a baby. Um, but after that, if they have to go to the doctor for the checkups and stuff. And they get sick. That's one thing I didn't think about before I had him. I, I knew children get sick, but I didn't realize how often babies get sick. They get anything and everything. He, he was born with jaundice, which is a, it has to do with the bilirubin in their systems, but he was, he was born with that, so we had to go to the doctor for blood tests every day for like the first three weeks. And after that, he got a cold. He's had at least five colds in his lifetime. He's nine months old. Um, they get all kinds of things. They have to get shots. And then there's teething. Um, Tyler is a very good baby. I'm lucky. Even when he's sick, he, he does pretty well. But when he's teething, he gets very cranky. Um, he runs fevers, he gets diarrhea, his mouth hurts. He chews on everything, he spits up. 
it it gets to be a lot after a while when all this stuff starts happening at once. Um, at the time I became pregnant, um, we didn't use any form of birth control. Um, I really regret that now because it would have been so easy just to, you know, get a rubber or something, mm -hmm. but we didn't. Ah, ah, ah. And. Um, ah. The thing is, um, I guess I thought I was invincible. When you're a teenager, you think that none of this stuff ever happens to you. Um, it just, it's not supposed to. Your life is supposed to go perfect. Um, I'll take my word for it. Things do come up, and you're not invincible. Um, as far as birth control goes, there are so many different methods out there. And if you're going to have sex, do it safely. Make sure you protect yourself because no one else is going to. It's your responsibility to make sure you don't get pregnant.